what we're trying to do is explain to the users, again, how to use the product, but from the point of view of how this is the right product for you. This is Writers in Tech, a podcast where today's top content strategists, UX writers, and content designers share their well-kept industry secrets. Today's episode is brought to you by Writer, an all-in-one AI writing assistant for teams. Writer allows teams to create a single source of truth for brand terms that is easy to build, edit, and share. It integrates seamlessly with Chrome, Google Docs, Word, Outlook, and now offers a plugin that brings automated brand consistency directly to Figma. Go to writer.com, yes, that's W-R-I-T-E-R.com, and see what Writer can do for your team. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Writers in Tech, a podcast brought to you by the UX Writing Hub, which is an online education platform for writers in tech, mainly UX writers, product writers, content designers. It doesn't matter how you decide to name them, but people that actually write the copy of the UI of the user interface. My name is Yuval Keshtacher. I'm the founder of the UX Writing Hub and the host of the Writers in Tech podcast. And today I have a fantastic guest, which I've been waiting for a while to interview her, and I'm very happy to have her here today. And her name is Paula Stern. And Paula has been doing technical writing for many, many years. She has a lot of experience in technical writing, and she will tell us more about experience today. Paula, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. It's a pleasure having you. I was looking forward to this episode. I'm very happy to have you here today. I know that you're an overachiever and that you're doing like amazing stuff with like many different events. So tell me more about your background, first of all, your professional background. Well, let me start by my educational background, which is completely worthless. Yeah. I got a political <laughs> science degree from Columbia University. And to prove how worthless the background is, it, the degree is written in Latin. Worthless. In Latin. The degree is in Latin. It's very funny. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. So I moved to Israel and I got a job at, basically in the early start of technical writing in Israel. And the qualifications included being able to use paint and knowing how to write. And that was it. And so I've sort of worked my way through the technical writing industry and many years later, I, I founded a company. A few years later, I incorporated eventually. And at some point, I decided that what I really wanted to do was to train technical writers because I felt that the current training that they weren't getting wasn't correct. It wasn't focused properly. So what I did was I opened up a school and I have trained well over 500 technical writers. It's not just me. It's me and a bunch of other people as well other instructors. And that taught me a tremendous amount about the industry that I didn't know about. So beyond that, I also help run, basically it's still an email list, believe it or not, called Tech Short, which at the height it had over 2,000 technical writers in it. Today it has less because we've spread out to many other platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. And as an offshoot of that work. I have done two other things. One of them is I run the annual conference called Megacom, which is a stunning event. It's just amazing. This year it was held virtually as it was last year. Hopefully next year it won't be. But holding it online enables us to do something that I love, which is to reach way beyond any borders. And we had 25% of the people didn't even come from Israel, which I loved. This has always been an Israeli event, and this became very much an international event, and I loved that. And then the final thing that I did was starting five years ago, we opened up TCOM Europe, which sure most of you people know, is an amazing organization with over 10,000 writers, including UX writers, translators, everything, all focused on service to the technical writing or high-tech industry. And so I also help run TCOM Israel and Europe. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Well, the professional side. Okay, let's go back to like starting as a technical writer, knowing only like paint and how to write. So you've probably seen this industry change a lot. And I would like to know, based on your experience from your angle, from your point of view, like how is the discipline have changed? Like, of course it's changed, but in what way and what good things happen since then, what bad things happen? There's a lot of amazing changes. The, the, the first changes that these continue are the introduction of tools that make our job easier. There's a lot involved in technical writing. There is the content, 
and there's the formatting, how we present the information. What hasn't changed is the purpose of our job, and it, the purpose has remained the same. It is to serve the needs of the users, the same as UX. The difference, I think, is that it that has come about in the industry is that we no longer write about the product, we write for the user. Obviously, we're writing about the product, but our goal now isn't to say, okay, this is what the product does. It does A, B, C. This is what you see. Nobody cares what you see, and nobody cares what the product does. What they care about is what they want to do with it. And so I think what's come into effect in the last couple of years is aligning UX, the user experience, not only with the UI, but also with the documentation. So our documentation says, okay, what do you, the user, want to do? This is how you can do it. We'll tell you how. That part of technical writing hasn't changed. We still have to tell you how. That's what we do. But we're focused not on all the things you don't need to know, but all the things you do know to accomplish what you want to accomplish as the user. So I think that's where technical writing is today, and it's it's a really good place to be. I guess that one thing that UX writers could learn from technical writers is how to grasp all of those complicated ideas and communicate them in a simple way. Like, what kind of methodologies do you have for that? There's two parts to it. It's knowing the user, which is sometimes very, very difficult. And there are ways to learn how to know who the user is or to get a better idea of the user. And the second part is to have a very good understanding of the product because products should be driven by what the users want to do with it. And when they're driven by the users and not by features, then you end up with a better product that's used by many people. So in terms of UX writers I've worked with, I think my biggest suggestion is that you work harder on understanding the technical background of the product. And like the technical writers, you too should be meeting with the support team, professional services, the marketing, all of the others in the company that have any direct contact with customers. And that will help you also because you have to do what we do in a few words. Right. And for the listeners that kind of thinking to themselves, wait, like they're new to this field, right? They don't have any experience and they think, wait, but what's the, what exactly is technical writing? How can we define that? At the most basic level, technical writing means writing the technical documents, if you will, the user guides, the online help, the knowledge base maybe. We don't write the marketing stuff usually, sometimes we do, but what we do, that's how we do it. What we're trying to do is explain to the users, again, how to use the product, but from the point of view of how this is the right product for you. What are you trying to do? Good, now that we know what you want to do, this is how you do it. One very simple example is Photoshop. It's a great graphics program and a lot of people use it at varying levels. And it's, it's a pretty hard, you know, very complicated program. And one of the things that you can do with it is something called layers, okay? So layers are you take a picture and then you can sort of take a lot of pictures and put them together. For example, if you have a beach and you want to have horses running across it, you could take a picture of a beach and then you can like sort of put the horses on top of it. So what layers let you do is put those horses on and then along comes somebody and says, no, 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 that's a terrible idea. Take the horses off. Or you know what? That's great. But can you put more horses on? And then you put them on and you do this by layers. They're like one layer on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. So if you explain to a user how to make a layer for a user who doesn't understand what a layer is, it's worthless. It's kind of like a lot of people incorrectly write to tell users how to do something they know how to do. And only if you understand how to use it, would you be able to understand the manual? And that's wrong. We have to write the same way you have to write when the UX to the level of the users. You need to know, do they understand the terms? And if they don't understand the terms in the interface, they have to be explained in some way or a different term has to be used. And so a lot of times what we do as technical writers is explain the stuff that you guys didn't make clear enough. So the harder you work, the less work we have, essentially. I see. So it's like the technical writer could take it away where like the UX writer's work ended, where the UX writer did their best to kind of make right. it self-explanatory and intuitive as much as they can. But at the end of the day, you have like features and I'm just trying to use this new CRM system name HubSpot. And without the technical documentation of that tool, 
like regardless right. to the level of the content design slash UX writing of this platform, right. which is pretty much awesome, it still have many complexities. Like you have agencies that their job is to do those type of integrations. So let alone, it will be very challenging for one person like me to understand how to do that. So the documentation should be like really clear about how to use different capabilities and best practices. So I found myself in the last couple of days dive really deeply of course, I will always look on the UX writing of a platform, but this right. time I looked on the documentation and definitely it was really clear to me, like, what's the difference over there? That's right. The other thing you can have is if you are developers and what they need to do is work with, like behind the scenes, what we call the back end. So the front end of the program is the UI or the UI actually. And the back end is what it runs with. And that may be where Another company can come in, for example, and take this small company's product and put it into their product to make their product do something else. And that would be called API and application programming interface, right? So we write the API documentation, which doesn't have necessarily a UI because that's irrelevant to the developers. So we write that also. I think you're right. I think that the UI is there always and the technical writing, ideally, user would use it once and in a perfect world, not needed again, because the UI is enough to explain to them, to trigger what they read or read to know them, to teach them what they need to do or to tell them what they have to do. So the documentation is still important, but it's used less often or it's used for less used features. And the UI is always there. So that definitely is, is the difference between them. But as you said, it's always, always, always depends on understanding who your users are. So for example, if your users would be API developers, definitely the technical documentation should be very clear about how to plug and play the API and how to do API calls and all of that kind of stuff that developers probably need to do on a daily basis and so on. So it definitely depends on your users. And often I see that, you know, the more technical you are with your work in high tech, for example, like developer, front end, back end, like the more you need documentations of different platforms to kind of understand how to use them. Right. Amazing. So you said like the tools have changed and like th- this is the kind of stuff that really changed in the last years, of course. Like, you know, at the beginning probably it was like very nasty softwares and interfaces and now they're like way more accessible stuff that is probably run by like very smart technology So what kind of tools do you feel like they're best practices for people that do technical writing these days? It's a lot of companies come to us and ask us, you know, what's the best tool for us? And there's a lot of different answers. I was actually hired by one vendor and then somebody came over while I was standing with this person and asked me about a different one. And I was very embarrassed because here I'm representing company A and somebody come asked me about company B. And I looked at the guy from company A and he said, answer. And so I said that they're both very good tools. It depends what you need to do. The biggest change I think that's happened in the last few years is that more and more tools are becoming in the truest sense, meaning they're literally on the cloud. So I can take any computer and sit down, log in and work. Whereas five years ago, 10 years ago, I had to install a program on my computer and it sat there and I worked and I remember probably about 15 years ago, I was working at a company and all of a sudden there was a lot of noise behind me and I wasn't sure what was going on and I was really focused on my work. And finally, somebody said to me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm working, why? And they had told me originally that everything should be on the network and the network had gone down, so they couldn't work. But I knew that my tool, my documentation tool didn't work well on the network. So despite what they said, I had put it on my computer and I was happily working away on my computer while everyone else was having coffee because the network had gone down a couple of weeks ago, actually. The same sort of thing, the internet went down in this high-tech company in Tel Aviv. And so again, there was all this noise behind me and I kept working and somebody came over and I remembered the first time it happened. They said, what are you doing? And I said, hotspot, hotspot, as I had opened up my own hotspot so I could work. I think the biggest difference that we experience today is indeed the internet. The idea, I mean, we've always had the internet literally for the last 20 something years, but how much more we are cloud-based now than ever before. And that's true in documentation tools as well. There are still the older tools that are not, you know, cloud-based, but I think they're, I think, I hope they're going to be moving more to the cloud because they're very powerful. And there are many 
very powerful tools available now on the cloud as well. Amazing. You know, as a person that you have right point, which is a technical writing agency. So yeah. what kind of day in your life or like the service that you provide look like? And I did this one time. We have a technical writing course that we started about 15, 16 years ago. And I would consider a typical day for a technical writer. And at the end of the day, when I was closing up, I thought, I have to write this down. I sat down and I wrote down that I came in at, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and the product manager wasn't in yet. So I thought, all right. So I went and I did something else. And when she came in, I went over to her to ask her for the document she was supposed to have reviewed. And she hadn't, which is also very typical. So I said, okay. So then I went and I did something else. And I, what I did was I opened up the program for bugs in the program, because a lot of time there were bugs related to documentation and it was my job to fix them. So I went in and I saw that they were missing a new feature. So I went to the engineer and sat with him, learned how to do it and went and wrote about it. Went back to the product manager and said, did you finish yet? No. Okay, that's fine. Went and handled another bug. And this was how my day went. I was a lot of people have the misconception that technical writers come in the morning, eight o'clock, start typing, 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 typing. Maybe they stop for lunch. Then they go back and type, 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 type and go and leave. And it's not that way at all. We're constantly interacting with so many people. And this one company I'm working with now, I would say almost every day, somebody comes by and asks for help. So the like this v VP of products is putting out a call for a new training manager. He asked me to rewrite that. And the human resources person came over. And one of the things that we have, which is not unique to Israel, but it's very common, is that we are the English experts. So everybody asks, you know, the, the human resources needs help and the business development needs help and the marketing guy needs help. So it, it's a lot of fun, a lot of interaction with people. Right, because you're the only native English speaking person in the team or right. something like that. Right. And then you have the, the UX designer comes over and creates this error message, which it wasn't an error message, actually. It was you had to create a policy. And as soon as you clicked whatever, instead of something like success, there was a, a window with confetti coming down and a, a thing that said, congrats, and a big, you know, like a cheering thing. And below with the button, instead of saying like, okay, he said, cool. And I thought, okay, no, no, this is not going to work. Uh, get rid of the confetti. Congrats is when somebody has a baby, not when they finish creating a policy. And cool does not work at all. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. So we get to sort of correct everybody's English. And we also offer tremendous value to our clients because we're the first user, the first customer in a way. And, and that also is a fun thing to be because we get to see all the things that don't work properly. And am I supposed to really have to click three times to make this work? No. <laughs> so this doesn't work. So that sort of thing. So you're also kind of helping the team to test it in the same yeah. time. Yeah, we, we get to do QA. We do a lot of stuff. It's fun. It's, it's a fun job. Yeah. And it sounds like there's a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of people out there listening to us. They're probably, they're doing this transition from maybe copywriting, content marketing, journalism, right. or design even to UX writing. And they don't know much about technical writing. And I feel like that there is a really interesting opportunity here for these type of people to learn more about technical writing. Okay. What do you think about that? So I would say when you, as a UX writer is working on a window in the UI. It's very important to understand how a user gets to that window, for example, what the user has done already, what the user has to do, and what that leads them to, the, the workflow. And the technical writer can help you because if you're working on this window, they're working on, we're usually working on the whole system. We used to talk about using the example of a car for example, you typically have an engineer who would be working on the, I don't know, the engine and you'd have one working on the wheels and you'd have one working on the doors and the front and the back. And if you go to any one of these engineers, they can only tell you about their little area of the car. And the one who sort of works with the whole car is the technical writer. So the marketing, they want to sell it. I've had marketing departments send me documents and I'll call them up and say, the product doesn't do that. And they'll say, well, but our clients really want it to do that. And we'll say, that's nice, but the product doesn't do that. You can't say that the product does something it doesn't do. So the people that you should really be working with in your company are the technical writers. They can give you a really good sense of the why. And that 
is necessary for you to do your job. And we have usually a lot to say about the UX. And we also, it's, again, it's depending on what country you're in and what language you're developing it in. Because when you're working in a country that's developing in a different language, for example, in Israel, most of our design is done in English. And most of our developers and programmers are not native English speakers. And they're very creative. And they come up with the most amazing words that aren't actually words. And so it's your job to sort of bring it back to reality. And we have to capture what you do and explain it in our documents. So it's relevant to us as well that the UI be as tight and as consistent as possible. What's very important is to see every window as part of the whole. It's a whole thing, a whole project, a whole product. And if you're focused only on this one window, and I've seen this a lot of times when you have larger companies and several writers, if they're not working together, there's inconsistency in the naming or capitalization or location or things like that. And that hurts the user. So the larger your product is, the more writers you're working with, the more important it is to have some sort of like a glossary or a style guide or something firmly in place so that the consistencies are avoided because everything, the user may or may not notice it in one window, but when we have to document it and show them all the windows, that's when they see that, wait, this didn't work or this is named differently or something like that. Amazing. So it's really important to talk to the technical writing and to know more about the technical writing. So you'll have more of like an overview of the product and it will help you to create a consistent user experience at the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and who do you think should name the features? Is it the technical writers, the product managers, the UX writers? Uh, where do you see, like, based on your experience? I think it's a combination. I think it's something that in many small companies, the technical writer is the UX writer. And so I get right. to do that all the time. I get to change the UI and comment on, on things, that sort of thing. I think it's important to work together because ultimately I think it's the UX writer, first of all, that, that has the final say but only if they have the knowledge of the entire product. And as if you're only looking at this one window and saying, well, this is the this, that's fine. But over there, it's called something else. So I don't really know. I don't know who the final answer. I think it depends on the company. It depends on the product. And it depends on how well they work together. But it, in a perfect scenario, I think it would be both. I think it would, it would be a meeting to decide on these things. And I would give more weight to the UX writer but I think the technical writers should be involved as well. And I know that you have the Megacom conference that you told me about. So I want to learn more from you. I know from my point of view on, on the value of the UX running community. And tell me more about like, how is it to be like a community of technical writers with this type of events and the, the value of these events to your community, basically? I think it's very critical for people to gather with their colleagues and the idea of a professional organization is critical because otherwise we are in a silo and we're working and possibly doing things that there's a reason not to do them. What Megacom brings to the Israel technical writing community and now to many others from other countries as well, it brings a lot of what's happening, the latest trends, the latest techniques, an introduction to new tools that people didn't know were out there. I had two people from the U.S., approach me two different places. One was North Carolina for the record. And they told me about tools I had never heard of. And so I said, I'm going to give you 10 minutes and I want you to show us that tool. And this is something new that Megacom allowed for. Also, there was a tremendous amount of networking. We have speed networking where you have like four minutes to talk to somebody and then it switches, you talk to somebody else. And that was a lot of fun. Also, we got to more and more do something that I've been trying to do for years, which is to really build sort of bridges between our small Israeli technical writing community, which is very sophisticated compared to most communities, but it's also very isolated. And in Europe, for example, in this in TCOM Europe, which we're now a part of, they have what they call cross-border events, which is great. You know, the Netherlands goes to, I think it was Belgium and Switzerland goes to Austria and they all, you know, go across whatever they meet somewhere and they share information and they talk and things like that. And we don't do cross-border events in Israel. We don't really <laughs> have that option. So I don't think of it as cross-border, but I think of it as bridges. And so in the next couple of months, we're going to be sending up events with other technical writers in the Netherlands, in Austria, and in the UK, and, and possibly Bulgaria and some other countries as well. So I think it's really important 
when you have these conferences to first of all, see what other people are doing, but also just to, for me, when I started going to these conferences in other countries, it reinforced my belief that Israel has an amazing community of technical writers. And, and, and I needed to sort of go out to look, because I, the first time I went there, I was sure like, oh my God, okay, we're going to learn. And they're so much way more than we are. And they're not. And they were actually very impressed by us. And I love that. And so these organizations then brought in several of the Israeli technical writers to speak in India and Bulgaria and Germany and Austria. And I've spoken in all those places and more, and it's wonderful. So seeing how our own community is respected made me respect it even more. So I think that's what the community is in these conferences. And it's also just fun to talk to other people who are doing the same thing as you're doing and learn, even if you just learn that you're doing something right, it's enough. But imagine how much you can learn when maybe there's other options as well. That's a really cool tip to, to like get involved in your, with your community. So yes. there's so much stuff that we're doing every day and some other people do it in a different way because we're working in, with different technologies in an evolving field. It's really important to stay up to date. And the best way to do that is just to get involved with some kind of a professional community. Right. So I really like that tip. Yeah. The last question that I have for this episode, and this is every episode that we're doing, by the way, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but we're asking for our guests because I'm interviewing basically the best writers in the world, right? So we're asking, how would you write the name of this episode that we've just had? Oh, wow. That's and then we're doing some kind of a brainstorming session where we talk a little bit about it. We can also take it offline afterwards, of course, and then decide. So I would talk about the importance of building bridges because I think that is a key message. If you're in a silo, if you're not working with other people in your industry, you're missing out so much. And if you're only working with your colleagues in Israel, you're missing so much. And that's true of any country, no matter what country you're working in, if you're not reaching out, and you're not, as, as Yuval, as you said, if you're not keeping up with the most latest technologies and what's out there and the, the rules and how things were done five years ago is so different than how they're done now. And the capabilities that we're constantly developing in every field changes. So I think that the importance of building bridges, that would be my summary of my message. That's amazing. It's a really good name. And I think like it's not only about the importance of building bridges f with other countries, but it's also building bridges in your community or even building bridges between UX writers and technical writers <laughs> or building bridges as writers with your company. So I think like it's a really, really good name. I'll add one more thing. So, you said it there for a second, but I would expand on that. In your company, you need to be in contact with the support team, the developers, the QA, management. You need to build bridges inside your own company. It's, it's probably the most important bridges you can build, that they know what you're doing and the value that you're bringing to your company. That's a really good tip to kind of uh, finish this episode. Paul Stone, that was amazing. I had so much fun talking to you today. Me too. Thank you so much, Yuval. <laughs> Thank you. In case people want to reach out and find you, where would be the best place to do it? I give you my email. Just don't spam it. Paula, P-A-U-L-A, at WritePoint, W-R-I-T-E-P-O-I-N-T dot com. You can also reach me probably on Facebook, definitely on LinkedIn, lately more on LinkedIn than Facebook, although I hear that's mostly, and I don't know, look up Megacom and look up WritePoint. And anyway, I'm definitely reachable. So just reach out. Amazing. So I'm going to add all of those, except from the email, but I'm going to add all of the, like the, your LinkedIn and website in the show right. notes so people can reach out to you. And That's great. Paula, thank you so much. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking thank to you. you. And thank you, the listeners, for listening to another thank episode you. of Writers in Tech, a podcast brought to you by the UX Writing Hub, which is a training platform for UX writers, content designers, and people that want to just get better at product writing. So if you're interested in that, I recommend you to check our website. We have a lot of free resources as well. So a weekly newsletter or a free UX writing course that you can check. And maybe the blog, which we update every week. And also a Facebook group and many, many stuff. So check the website and I'm sure you're going to love it. That's about it, Paula. 
Thank you and see you next time. Bye.